This is Nagarajan. Welcome back. In today's session, let's learn to use JSON files in Selenium WebDriver. In the traditional approach, we basically maintain the test data in the form of Excel files. Nowadays, most of the companies are preferring to use JSON data despite the Excel data. In terms of performance, I would say JSON will be much faster when compared to Excel files. Without wasting time, let's jump into the code. I already created the test scripts. I'm just going to walk you through the code. Let's get started right away. Here is the Java class JSON data provider test. I've declared the private variables for a web driver, URL and product index. Here we have the add before test annotation. That is uh, test ng annotation. This gets triggered before the first add test. I've written a method invoke URL, which opens up the sourcedemo.com web page. And inside this method, we are setting up the Chrome driver property using system.set property. And we are creating the instance of a dry Chrome driver. We are maximizing the window. We are deleting the cookies. We are setting up the implicit weight with the time interval of 10 seconds. And we are reading the URL. These are all the Selenium basics, which I wanted to touch upon. Let's move on to a test. Here we have a test engine data provider, get login data provider. I'll come to this part later and enable equal to true. So this makes this particular test to get trigger priority equal to one. This sets the priority of this particular test. It takes the first priority. Here we have the method verify login test that takes a parameter data that is in the form of hash map. Basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to enter the username and password and proceed with the login process. In the traditional approach, we basically pass the data from the Excel into the web page, right? But here we use JSON. So this data, data dot get of username and data dot get of password that comes from the JSON file. So that is what we are doing right now. And we have written a if condition here, data dot get of username that equals to standard user. If the username is standard user, then we are switching back the browser. This part you will understand when you see the execution. Next, I have written a verify product test. We have uh, two different tests here, verify login test and verify product test, right? So I'll touch this part also later. So let's uh, try to learn get login data provider. How it is trying to fetch the data from the JSON files. So when we talk about this particular thing, right, you'll come to understand. Okay. So here we have written a data provider. See the name is being called out here, get login data provider. So here I've defined the data provider, right? This data provider would return the two dimensional object array. Okay. Common utility dot get JSON data, user data dot JSON, login test, comma to see this thing, right? This thing returns two dimensional object array. Let me mouse over on it. See, this is returning object array, two dimensional object array. Fine. So before we get into this method, get JSON data, here I've written a code logic. Okay. So before we see the code logic, let's try to understand the JSON data and then we'll go into this particular method. Okay. Okay. Let me open up the user data JSON. This is being placed inside the SRC test resources. Okay. Here we have two different JSON object array. I mean, login test and product test. So look, look at this carefully. Inside this array, we have two different records in the form of key value pairs. I mean, username and password. Likewise, inside this product test also, it's an array that takes two records, product name and product page in the form of key value pairs. So, so we place the data inside a JSON file. So this data is meant for login test and this data is meant for product test. If you want, you can place this particular data inside a different product data JSON file. You can create a product data JSON file and you can place this data there. But for now, I've kept the data here itself. It's based on the user preference only. Okay. So that's all about the JSON file. Let's go back to get JSON data method. So this takes three parameters, right? As I said, uh, takes a JSON file name and the particular test which we wanted to trigger. This is the record count. So basically we have uh, 
two records that is why i've mentioned two here okay let me get into this method so try, listen carefully you'll get confused if you miss something okay okay this is the method i've written here okay so that returns the two dimensional object array that takes three parameters the json file name test name and the record count as i said this is the file name right and this is the test name which we wanted to trigger and this is the record count and we have the declaration for object uh, array here and we have the json file declaration that takes the json file path here okay and we've created a file reader class object this uh, json file path is being passed inside this file reader object and we are creating the json parser which we wanted to pass a particular file reader so that is why we have created this uh, json parser object okay listen carefully we have creating an instance of a json object okay and then we are trying to parse this file reader see json parser that parse of file reader that means initially what we did was we are just referring the file path json file path inside this file reader so we got the file object file reader object that is being passed inside json parser dot parse so we are just passing the json data that is present inside this file user data dot json see this is comprises of json data right so that is why we are trying to parse the json json data using json parser okay so parsing is done now all the data are in the form of json we are assigning the data inside this particular json object json right i think we are clear so far up till here okay now as i said earlier inside this test we have the array so that takes two records in the form of key value pairs right see we are passing the test name whether it's a login test or product test so based on the particular test we are fetching that records okay so the records are in the form of array so that is why we are assigning it to json array i've declared a json array here we are assigning this array value inside this particular object uh, json array test okay now we have the definition for the uh, two dimensional object array okay so this has to create the data dynamically right so that is why the record count is uh, two so this creates a two dimensional object array and we have the hash map declaration okay and don't need to worry about this thing we'll try to understand clearly okay as i said we have the json array we are trying to iterate over the data using for loop okay now we are trying to fetch the record one by one okay json array dot get of y first record is going to get assigned to this particular json object data since the data are in the form of key value pairs and we are trying to use the set here so using the key set we are trying to separate the username and password so we are using iterator keys dot iterator and uh, inside the while loop if you could see we are trying to fetch the username with the key and the value right a json object dot get of key so this gets the data username and password from the user data dot <coughs> json file <coughs> sorry <coughs> now once the data are fetched from the json file i mean the key and value we are trying to put that value inside this hash map see i've i told you if we have the declaration here hash map right so map dot put of key and the value so we are just inserting the data into the into this hash map and we are assigning this hash map into this two dimensional object array this is being returned object data json data is returning two dimensional object array in short i would say we are trying to iterate over a json array right and then we are fetching the data this these data are in the form of key value pairs that is why we are getting the data and putting into this hash map and we are assigning the hash map into a two dimensional object array right here so that's all about this uh, git json data let's move back i think we are very clear with this uh, get login data provider as well i don't want to talk about uh, get product data provider 
So this uh, code logic is remains the same as like uh, get login data provider. Okay, everything remains the same and we are passing the product test here. That's it. Now let's go back to verify product test. So as we did it in the verify login test, we are uh, mentioning the get product data provider. So verify product test that takes the data parameter in the form of hash map. Everything remains the same. So here is the only the web page logic is different. I mean this part. Okay, we are. So I will tell you what we are trying to do here. We are just trying to fetch the product names using this uh, web list. See, driver.find elements of y.csv selector. We are just fetching the product names. Okay, and then we are assigning it to this product names list. Likewise, we are fetching the product name prices and we are assigning it to this product prices. And we are performing the assertions here. Okay, here we have this product index. Okay, in the initially we had talked about this uh, private uh, variable declaration, right? So that is going to help us now. See what we are trying to do is we, this product index is being passed here. Okay, this represents the first product or the second product or the third product. Here we have two two records only inside the JSON file, right? So whenever we iterate over the data, I mean the JSON file data, <coughs> when it comes here, initially the product index would be zero. <coughs> when it iterates, it takes zero next iteration it takes to one okay so that likewise we fetch the first product name and the first product price likewise the second product name and the second product price. that is why we are iterating here product index plus plus i hope this makes sense i think it's time to uh, go for the execution okay let me but before i trigger the test execution i'd like to show you the web page as well okay let me open up the source demo.com web page i'll show you the functional part this is the sourcedemo.com web page and as part of the login test we are trying to enter the username and password so firstly we are trying to enter with the standard user okay once we get into this inventory.html page now we are navigating back to the browser by clicking on the back button we are trying to enter the problem user that is what we are doing as part of the login test and again, we are validating the product name and the prices. So these are all the product names. Source Lab Backpack, Bike Light, Bold T-Shirt, Fleece Jacket. For now, we have two records. So it is going to validate these product names and prices. That's it. Let me trigger the execution. The Chrome driver has started successfully. Let's see. It is opening up the page. It does all the assertions. I could not able to see that. See here, the results tab, you could see all the tests were passed. Very good. But let me do one thing. Uh, let me add thread dot sleep here to show you the test execution properly. Okay, I've read the code. Now let's run it again. Let's wait. It is now entering the standard user and the secret source is the password. It does and it is going with problem user. Entering the password. It does the assertions for product names and the price. I think this is done now. Let's see. We are done with the execution. With this, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you so much for watching the video. See, I've been putting more efforts on collecting the data, working on the code logic. I just wanted to help you guys that's it so please do more and so on and use these coding steps in your real time project okay thanks again i'll see you guys in the next video until then take care bye bye